This film is intended for eye surgeons for training and education purposes. Viewer discretion is strongly recommended. Hi, I'm here with yet another very interesting and a complex case. He's a 75-year-old gentleman who is having severe pain and redness for the last 1 week and he has this long-standing cataract for which he has been careless. And on examination, uh, we see this intumescent white cataract. The striking feature is the anterior chamber is extremely shallow. It's almost like the iris and the cornea are touching in multiple quadrants, and even the central anterior chamber depth is extremely low. It is just 1.3 millimeter. On the day of the surgery, the pressures were around 40, and after a minute, all the pressures came down to 24. But surgical intervention was uh, necessary for this condition to be relieved. there is a vague history of trauma as well which i'm not sure whether to correlate or not and the case is extremely complex it has got multiple issues to be dealt with and as i'm planning how to do this case let me break this case into smaller points and highlight each of the issues which i'm expecting and how i'm going to get prepared for this number 1 the swollen lens is going to make rexis itself a challenge so my plan is to do a two stage rexis Number 2 looking at the extreme shallowness of the anterior chamber i am also expecting some sort of a generalized zonular weakness which itself is responsible for this uh, extreme shallowness of the anterior chamber so i need to be ready to deal with the zonular weakness part as well so to counter that i am ready with my capsule tension ring and capsule hooks and if need arises maybe a capsule tension segment or if i am unable to see the bag i am also ready with an iris clip lens in this patient I'm expecting post capsule and vitreous issues as well so I'm ready with my vitrectomy in it so let's see how things turn out in this case as I'm doing the side port incisions extreme care is taken not to inadvertently touch the anterior capsule because chamber is extremely shallow after staining the anterior capsule dispersive OVD is injected to deepen the chamber and also create some space The main 2.8 mm incision is created. The initial plan is to do a small 3 mm rexus. 26 G needle is used to create the initial puncture, followed by grasping of the flap with the Haldipuka rexus forceps, and a small 3 mm rexus could be successfully achieved. The next challenge is to decompress the bag. The opening is very small. and it's very difficult to access the areas near the equator which is all filled with this swollen cortex so i need to have access to these areas to decompress there are three options for me to usually decompress either i use the phaco probe itself or the bimanual irrigation aspiration cannula but in this case specifically i have chosen this 23g cannula which we use for our viscoelastic injection that is used as an aspiration cannula the reason is it's thicker bore allows us to aspirate the swollen cortex and second part would be with this angulated cannula we can reach up to the equator and decompress the swollen cortex care has to be taken when trying to do this not to exert any tension on the rexus margin we need to remember that it is long standing cataracts intumescent lenses the anterior capsule is going to be very flimsy minor amount of stretch can cause a tear and the entire effort can go to waste so i'm using this cannula with the aspiration on at multiple quadrants and then trying to aspirate out all the cortex in some quadrants we can see that the anterior capsule is wrinkling suggesting that there is a coexisting zonular weakness as well As I'm aspirating this nasal and the inferior nasal quadrant this is the area where the wrinkling of the capsule is much more pronounced suggesting that the zonular weakness is probably more profound here although we have a generalized zonular weakness apart from this this area seems to be much more weaker than the rest of the area once I'm happy with the amount of decompression within the capsular bag time to enlarge the rexus ovd is used to again pressurize the chamber tangential cut is given using a micro scissors the flap is grasped with a 
rexus forceps and a secondary larger rexus is being created. During this process, we can see this wrinkling of the capsule in the nasal quadrant, suggestive of uh, zonular weakness in that zone, an appropriately sized and I thought a well-centered rexus was created. Since I saw a significant amount of zonular weakness there, I thought this is the right moment for me to put in a CTR to strengthen that area. So I did not want to postpone the insertion of CTR. OVD is injected under the rexus margin to create some space and then the CTR is threaded in gently and care is taken to ensure that the CTR encompasses the weak zone and supports it quite well. So to save the bag, a CTR was critical and to put in a CTR, rexus was mandatory. All the steps are going according to plan so far, so it looks alright. Time to emulsify the nucleus. The nucleus is quite soft, so I am not expecting any difficulty. The most difficult steps of rexus and stabilizing the bag with the CTR are done and over. So I am not so much uh, intimidated by managing the nucleus. The nucleus is very soft, so I am going to use extremely low power to hold it and then chop it. But as the nucleus emulsification process is going on, I am getting a sense that the there is a positive pressure and the iris is trying to come out through all the ports. I am aware of that at this point and my assumption is that maybe we are going to have fluid misdirection like a phenomenon which is pushing the bag and the iris anteriorly. So I come out, inject more viscoelastic, preferably I am injecting the dispersive OVD first so that it acts like a barrier and also prevents the fluid from percolating beyond the transzonular area. And of course I am going to use HPMC inside the bag just to prevent any heat build up. As the remaining fragments are being emulsified, point to note here is that moving the nuclear fragments is going to be difficult. So I am using a two point uh, rotation technique wherein the phaco tip as well as the chopper them both together ensure that the nucleus rotation is done. This bimanual way of uh, manipulating the nucleus inside the capsule bag is much more efficient and also less strenuous on the zonules. The iris has become a tonic, maybe because of persistently raised pressure, it's trying to prolapse out to the side ports. Time to come out and then fill in with the dispersive OVD. It just makes the iris behave a little bit better, stays in place as the last fragment is being emulsified. Time to remove the cortex. There is some amount of thick swollen cortex as well. And I'm just using the bimanual irrigation aspiration cannula to do the job. At this point, what is striking to note here is the rexus is slightly eccentric. Although initially when I did the rexus, it looked well centered. Once I put in a CTR, CTR put the bag in its place. And that's the reason why the rexus is looking eccentric. Actually, the creation of the rexus itself was eccentric. Initially, I planned it rexus on the pupil. But the lens itself was slightly decentered. Once the bag is stabilized, the rexus is looking eccentric now. Blowing the posterior capsule with uh, BSS ensures that the fibers which are sticking onto this posterior capsule are released. This helps us to maneuver the cortex a little bit more easily because in these eyes with zonal weakness, there is very little counter-traction provided by the bag. So that's the reason why the cortex stripping becomes extremely difficult and challenging. And on top of that, we also have a CTR. Releasing those fibers attached to the posterior capsule by flushing them with BSS, I'm hoping that it is going to make my job a little bit more easier. The bag is refilled with OVD before attempting to grasp the cortex and then strip it tangentially. There are moments like this where I inadvertently catch the anterior capsule and it looks like the bag is threatening to come out. There are few fibers of cortex in the peripheral area and I'm not going to bother about it now presently. Before putting in the lens, I would just want to confirm the absence of any vitreous which could have prolapsed across the zonules. There is none. In such eyes with the generalized zonular weakness, my preferred technique of IOL placement is the IOL trap technique wherein the Multi-piece hydrophobic lens is used and the haptics are placed in the sulcus and the optic is trapped behind the rexus margin. So this optic capture technique has served me well uh, over the last many years in such cases with generalized zonular weakness. 
I'm creating some space in the ciliary sulcus by using sodium hyaluronate and then the haptics of the multi-piece lens are gently introduced into the sulcus. The distal haptic is first introduced over the anterior capsule followed by the trailing haptic which is gently dialed under the iris and above the anterior capsule. So now we have the lens in the uh, ciliary sulcus above the anterior capsule. Uh, the rexus is slightly eccentric than what I would have actually preferred and this was because of the, the centering of the initial rexus itself was off. Nevertheless, I can still fix this optic in this rexus but before doing that I need to remove all the OVD which is behind the lens and then in front of the lens. Once all the OVD is removed with the irrigation handpiece in my left hand the optic of the lens is gently pushed downwards so that it gets trapped behind the rexus margin in the capsular bag. This is indicated by the ovalization of the rexus. I'm not sure whether the iris is totally atonic or is going to come back to its size because when I saw in the opery it was mid dilated as well. So I'm just trying to tease the iris tissue to ensure that it just comes down a little bit. The side port and the main wound are Hydrated, time to close. On the first day, there is a central coronal edema, which cleared off in the next three days. On day three, this other picture was, patient had a visual acuity of 612. Pupil was still mid-dilated and uh, if the patient is symptomatic, we can and will consider pupilloplasty on a later date. So let me summarize the challenges which we had in this case and which were the strategies which worked and other strategies which could have been better. My anticipation of all the issues like a difficulty in creating a rexus because of the raised pressure and the strategy used to do a do stage rexus worked very well. Only point was the centration of the rexus had to be done on the lens and which escaped my attention during the surgery. Now once we had a small rexus, the decision to use this cannula to decompress the bag worked very well and then of course the idea of using the CTR immediately after the completion of the second rexus before nucleus management also ensured that the bag continued to remain stable during the process of nucleus emulsification. And lastly, my technique of uh, fixing the lens using the IOL trap technique does work well in such situations and uh, usually the lenses remain stable and well centered for long duration of time. So that was it. Thank you for watching and hope you found this helpful.